This playthrough is rated E10+. Plus. Assume it's because of adventure sickness or whatever. Where they had to, or what was it? I like to call it King Graham syndrome. Because he had to pick up everything that wasn't wasn't nailed down. I mean, I think King's Quest was like one of the first point and click adventure games I ever played. So that's why I call it King, King Graham syndrome. Even though he probably wasn't the first point and click adventure game character. I'm not sure who was. It was probably Adventure for like the Atari or something like that. Even that wasn't really point and click per se, but Can we try the vortex? We can... Step right in. We can try all day long. Every day. All day. Any day. Alright, let's use the snow globe. Snow globe actually sucked in the pseudo mystical energies of the mystery vortex. I was hoping something like that would happen. All right, now if we check it, whoops, it's a snow globe full of swirling pseudo mystical energies. All right, that's two two down, two to go. All right, let's get that. Let's get the the tooth, the pulling of of the different directions of the Bigfoots. Whoops. Yeah, it takes forever to go through this thing, so let's, uh, let's skedaddle. Quickly now, quickly. Hurry, hurry, I rush, I rush, I rush. And yeah, no reason to go back and talk to, like, the old mole men or the th cr Cushmans or anything like that, so. Because they'll just have dialogue from that point in the game, so. Back in the game where you only had so much data or you could only do so much dialogue and everything like that. You could do a ton, but you only had so much time, you know, and this is a comedy game. So let's go back to the, um... Dinosaur Bungie. This one's pretty straightforward uh, because it's basically pulling teeth from a dinosaur. Where have we seen dinosaurs before? Well, the dino place. So, all right, let's uh, start the machine up. And then, oh, I need to have his mouth open. There we go. Okay, so. It's a fearsome maw. Yeah, we had to at least uh, get, we had to get the, um, mouth open so basically you just have to do something while it's talking and then while it's mouth is open so now we can finally use it's that twine one yards of twine this is why you need the twine so all right now let's just pull this thing and be done with it right i can't take it anywhere hmm. can we use it I haven't got enough leverage from here to pull out a tooth. Oh. Well, we got a rambunctious rascal with a lot of energy. We finally got the tooth. The whole tooth? Nothing but. You can't handle the tooth. Oh, well, I guess we can. It's a somewhat authentic dinosaur tooth. All right, that's the third totem down, so one more to go. And yeah, the old adage, I don't know if anyone remembers the whole idea of to get a tooth out, some people would tie it to like a door or something like that, and just the abrupt roughness of pulling it out was like, I don't know, uh, more of a wives' tale, but people still did it, so. All right, let's get that final. Uh, picture the one with the man and the vegetables. Well, if you haven't already guessed, that's John Muir. So we need to uh, make a, uh, a, a a likeness of him. And remember that lady in the previous episode about saying she would make a, a fruit of your of it if you had a picture. Well, that's why we grabbed the portrait of John Muir here. A stunning portrait of John Muir, famous naturalist. But who is John Muir, really? What do you make of this? And naturalist John Muir, huh? This looks like a zucchini squash to me. I can do this, but it'll take a short while. Alright. And by that, a short while means just use get in the car and come back. I guess the idea is, maybe the idea, what the thought was to just oh, go solve some of the other puzzles while she did that. Like, maybe that was the thinking. But yeah, all you have to do is just leave and come back and she'll be done. Doctor, doctor, doctor. Fine, I have to be a pixel away. Fine. 
Where's my John Muir vegetable? Here you go, son. A zucchini squash that looks just like John Muir. Gee, thanks, man. And she keeps it for some reason. Thanks. Bye. All right, now we got the uh, famed naturalist John Muir zucchini plant squash. It's a gourd that looks just like John Muir, the naturalist. Okay, and that's it. We solved every puzzle of the game. Yeah, the only puzzle that I really had major trouble on was that ice pick thing because I just could not figure out how to get a stopper. Yeah, I don't know why I never thought of that at the time. So, oh well. That's what happens when you're a kid. Sometimes you don't think about this stuff. But yeah, we've, we've done it. We solved all the puzzles in the game. So now let's go give them to the chief and uh, save the Bigfoots and see how they, uh, what what magical natural occurrence will occur that we need to, uh, yeah, does she have any new extra dialogue now that we're chiefs now? Mrs. V? Yes. Oh yeah, I guess we could ask her about those. Sure. So, what's your take on that tornado totem pole? Well, my husband thinks it's some sort of homage to the wild and woolly nature of us Bigfoots. But if you ask me, I think it's an indictment of people who don't wash their hands before dinner. I remember when we had our niece, Jay, over for dinner, and I said, Jay, don't you touch that bread until you wash the icor off your fur. And Please then stop she talking. said... No. Why does that totem have a big tooth on it? Well, hon, some Bigfoots would have you believe that it's a symbol of power or some such. But if you want my opinion... And I can't imagine why we would. I think that pole represents the importance of visiting your dentist regularly. Life's funny, Sam. When I woke up this morning, I thought I'd just watch some TV and shoot some criminals. Now a big stinky forest creature is giving me a lecture on dental hygiene. I'm not joking, Bunny. Why do you think all those dinosaurs died out anyway? To impress the babes? No, it was tooth decay. Oh, of course. Who's the guy with a hat on the third totem pole? I thought he was you. I don't think so. Then I'm at a loss. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Have you given any thought to the totem pole with the two heads on it? Well, hon, it's either a visualization of our sun god's development and growth, or an ancient advertisement for an herbal mixture for balding Bigfoots. Bald Bigfoots? Ew. That would be gross. Bruno says hi. That's nice, hon. He didn't say that. What do you think of Trixie? Nice voice for such a deformed girl. Because she's not a Sasquatch. Conroy Bumpus is in the freezer. Good. <laughs> That's the answer to that. I wish my hair was more like yours. I can't do a thing with mine. That's why he always wears a hat. You should talk to my hair care specialist, Janet. She does marvelous work. Why, just last autumn, she was soaking my head and I said, Janet, you're just about the best hair care specialist I've ever known. Then yeah, she, she kind of goes the into her dialogue, even though our bow, dialogue's bow, bow. different, but then she goes into bow, that bow, dialogue. Bow. I can only imagine how exciting it must be to be married to the king of the Bigfoots. Oh, it's not that great. Sure, you get to travel, but sometimes okay, that one, that so one's, lovely. that one's, uh, uh, Why, just standard. I, was telling my I thought that would be a different uh, dialogue, actually, because, you know, you so were talking to, uh, to her in the uh, Bigfoot outfit, so. What do you think should be done to solve the rampant environmental problems facing the Bigfoots? The answers were all there in my husband's speech. Pull together. Okay, yeah, that's all the same. That's all the same too. So. extinction. Oh well, yeah, too bad I can't click. And if that doesn't click work, out that out of it. All the humans. Yes, yes, eat, gotta go. Eat all the humans. Don't be a stranger. Uh, destroy all humans. Oh, sorry. All humans. Actually, before we solve this, I want to see if that one dude with the rasp on his foot. Or the bunions has uh, actually makes a point to say anything. Join the party. If it's all the same to you, I think I'll just stay out here and file my coins. You must really not want to be a part of this party. It certainly is the tickiest. I wouldn't know. 
It's the teakiest thing that's ever been teaked. Enjoying yourself? Very much so. Okay. I think that's it. I think we can leave because we can't talk to any of these other guys, right? At least I don't think it let me talk to him. Oh. Huh. It didn't let me talk to him before. Maybe that was a, Maybe I d didn't click on it right. There is no try. There's only do. Or donut. What are you talking about? I was hoping you'd tell me. What do you want? What type of accent are you trying to do anyway? Are you the abominable, the boy in a bubble, the a berry? Never mind. That's not very funny, Rover. Oh, Rover, Road Rover, can't send somebody over. You're the skinniest Bigfoot I've ever seen. I've been fasting in preparation for the day when the aliens come to rescue us. Which we know exists. What's your story? Oh, the usual. I was strolling in the Andes, minding my own business, when some idiot mountain climber comes along and yells, Hey, it's the abominable snowman. Next thing I know, there's an avalanche, and I'm covered in 20 feet of snow. When I wake up, I'm hanging upside down in an ice block in some place called the Mystery Vortex. Sorry I asked. Yeah, he was, he's the one from the Mysterious Vortex. Uh, and then the other guy over this way was the one from the um, Gator Golf. In your delusional opinion, what would you make of the first totem pole? Well, the great winds depicted represent the chaos caused by the return of our alien brothers. Not entirely unlike the gust of wind we're hearing now. Oh, well. Any further insights into the dental totem pole? The truth of the tooth escapes me. The aliens have their own reasons. The aliens have a lot of reasons. That involve, like, behinds and stuff, too. What about the totem pole with a man on it? I think he's a Bigfoot alien hybrid. An Uber Yeti, perhaps. An Uber Mitch? Ugh. What do you think of the totem with the two faces? Obviously, our alien ancestors were hairless, and clearly their intention was to evolve into the beings of total hair we are today. Hey, I'm evolved, and I didn't even know it. Actually, you're just fuzzy. I'm devastated. You don't seem that devastated. Bruno's out by the pool. Wonderful. He must have convinced our alien forefathers to rescue us from this doomed planet. Actually, I think he's doing the backstroke. Well, we're doing all the hard work. Has Trixie brought back any news from the aliens? Not directly, but they've obviously given her some singing lessons. She can actually sing now? We put Conroy Bumpus in the freezer. Oh, that's great. The Freon should effectively suppress his evil Snartonian death rays. That's what we thought would happen. Yeah, if you believe so. Gotta go. Okay. We're at the finale, folks. Like, right at the very end. So, sorry for dragging it a little bit more. I just wanted to see if any extra dollars. So, yeah, this episode will probably be pretty big. I mean, it is the finale, so why not, right? Mr. Omnivore? Huh? Uh, we can ask him about everything, too. So, yep. We kind of had you Bigfoots pegged as plant eaters. No way, dude. When a Bigfoot gets hungry, he'll eat anything, even rabbits. I'd be worried if I wasn't churning with foul and incurable diseases. Yeah, who knows what Max has on him. Your appetite's bigger than Max's. But I have a bigger head. Hey, man, if you'd spent the past eight years on a bread and water diet, you'd be scarfing down everything in sight, too, dude. Maybe. So where have you been hiding for the past few years? Hiding? Dude, I've spent the last eight years manacled to a dunking boot. If Bruno and his girlfriend hadn't rescued me, I'd still be there. Ah, so that's what happened. That's how he escaped. So what did you think of the first totem pole? Dude, it's a picture of the ultimate wave machine. Oh, wa wave... well, yeah. How about the second totem pole? There's more than one. 
Three more, actually. Four altogether. I guess I missed them. How could you miss them? They're right there. Dude, chill. They're just totem poles. That'll save the world, or I mean Bigfoot's. Do you remember the pole with a man on it? You mean the peace and happiness pole? Sam, I don't think this guy's got enough wax in his board. Or enough bats in his belfry. I don't suppose you'd know about the fourth totem pole. Are you still talking to me? Who's the President of the United States? I thought they split up. Okay, I think we're done here. Yeah, and so was he. Ronald Reagan? The actor? Bruno's out by the pool. Rad. I'll go talk to him after I'm done eating. Eating house and home, anyway. What do you think of Trixie singing? It's the ginchiest. But we never heard her sing. What are you guys going to do with Conroy and Lee Harvey? Popsicles, dude. Major popsicles. All right. Gotta go. Mahalo, dude. Huh. But, uh, yeah, the music stopped for some reason. I don't know why. I, be I bet the thing lasted too long and it, it didn't reset so properly, so. All right, anyway, let's go. Uh, let's see if we can cl get the click right this time. Uh, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Oh, no, I didn't, did I? I did! Ha! Lucky me! Alright, let's give uh, the chief all the all the items and, uh, well, let's see what happens. There you go, chief. Hey, Mr. Chief, we found something that might tie into your totem poles. Yeah? W what is it? Grove tonic. Very resourceful. We just like stealing pillows. Like most magic and most fantasy, it's all based on the wording more than anything. So let's give the tooth and nothing but the tooth to the chief here. I don't know why we had to walk back and forth to do it. Hey, Chiefy Poo, I think I figured out one of those baffling totem poles. Genuine dinosaur tooth. I figured it might be something like that. Did he say genuine? That doesn't make sense. Or does it? Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, let's give him the vortex as next. I think I figured out one of the totem poles. Let me see. Handheld vortex. Good thinking. Thinking had nothing to do with it. I read the guide. I mean, uh, I figured it out on my own. Nah, I, I figured it out on my own. Just it's took a long time. Just kid. like John. All right, and finally, the the naturalist John Muir. If we give this to him, it should say the Bigfoots. But what will it do? Well, let's find out. And what? And hope you all enjoy the ending to Sam and Max. I believe we've deduced the secret of one of your totem poles. Hit me. The combination of man and nature. Inventive. Is it soup yet? Well, that should do it, right? Nothing's happening, Sam. What's the story, Pops? Well, I don't know. I'm sure you got the ingredients right, but... Of course, how silly of me. What? 
In order for the spell to work, we need a living Bigfoot sacrifice. And it'd be a shame to lose one of these furry fellas, don't you think? Wait, I've got an idea. And it doesn't require high explosives. Wait here. While he's gone, I'll go see if any of the Bigfoots wants to off themselves for the greater good. was one heck of an impressive display. And actually highly destructive to boot. Goodbye, Sam and Max. I'm not sure how I could ever thank you, so I guess I won't. Will you and Trixie be heading back into the forest to live an idyllic nature-oriented existence together? Hell no. We're going to Vegas to get hitched. If it hasn't been trashed by all this crazy redwood nonsense. We want to be in a place where we can sort of blend in, live our lives, maybe even raise a family. Ew. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, you nutsy, primitive man-beast, you. You boys should be proud of what you've helped us achieve here today. You mean the wholesale destruction of the symbols of modern civilization in the Western United States? You bet we are. Do we win a prize? Well, oh, why not? This medallion has been a part of my family for untold generations. Wear it in good health. Thanks, Chief. Max loves cheap sentiment. Mmm, mmm. Boiled covered chocolatey goodness. What's wrong, Sam? I don't think the wizard has anything in that bag for me. Well... I could give you my ritual headdress that I bought at Snucky's last week. I appreciate the gesture, but I've already got a hat. Well, that's fine too. Farewell, Sam and Max. Remember, though the night be dark, the dawn yet shall awaken and annoy you. Have a nice day. I'll miss that old rascal. I'll miss the way he smelled like a bag full of damp hamster shavings. Just like Grandpa. Hey, we forgot to get paid. Don't worry, little buddy. I've got it all covered. I hope you're happy. With those idiots on the case, we'll probably never see Bruno again. Oh, lighten up, Burl. Hey, they're back. Did you find Bruno? Of course. Bruno! How can we ever repay you? The blank looks on your faces are the only reward we need. That and a big fat check. Would you settle for 3,000 skee-ball tickets? Close enough. Let's go, Max. You know, Max, I can't help thinking that we've foolishly tampered with the fragile inner mechanisms of this little spaceship we call Earth. Gosh, Sam, if a few hundred years of civilization have to be total just to ensure that a bunch of smelly quasi-human creatures have a safe haven for their disgusting lifestyles, then so be it! You crack me up, little buddy.
Burrow, did Bruno always have four arms? <laughs> and that's it. That's the end of Sam and Maxon. Hey, there's Bubsy, uh, Squeezable Dolls, Chucky, R2-D2. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's the end of the game. It ends in a silly fashion, and the game starts in a silly fashion. Though, oh, there's the uh, tentacles from Day of the Tentacle. Yeah, a lot of uh, references to other games. You can just shoot them. There's no real points other than just killing them. But, uh, but yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, Bill. That was it. Bill Farmer, Sam, Nick, Dick Jameson is uh, Max. Thanks for all the work, guys. I appreciated the game. It was an entertaining game. Had a weird sense of humor. It was just. You know, surreal and just goofy and just you know, the, the the really the only trouble with this game was that some of the puzzles you had to think outside the box to solve some of them. Some of them were obvious, and then some were just like, what? That's how you figure it out. So, yeah, I would say that was probably one of the few issues I had with this game growing up. Nowadays, it's not so bad now that I'm aware of the puzzles and everything with that. But it is supposed to be a puzzle game. You're supposed to buy the game and spend like days to weeks, you know, kind of figuring it out. Obviously. You could actually beat it in an hour or two if you knew what you were doing, but uh, still enjoyable. And I like the interactive ending where you get to shoot at things. But uh, um, yeah, I'm not sure what else to say about the game. I thought the voice acting was great. Like I said, the comedy, the puzzles for the most part were pretty, pretty good, except for you know a, a few of the odd ones that I told told you about. Um, yeah, I love the quirky music in this game. You know, most of them are very, uh, very memorable, especially the Conroy Bumpus uh, theme song. I have no idea why Bubsy's there. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, it might be reference something else, but uh, I'm trying to think what else. But yeah, LucasArts. Uh, you know, for a while they were making some pretty, pretty good games, just back to back with like, uh, you know. Um, uh, Sam and Max, uh, Secret of Monkey Island, stuff like that, Full Throttle, um, all those games, and uh, I'm, I'm glad I grew up in this era of gaming, because uh, we'll never have really games like these anymore, because games have to be too either too big or too, like, indie to, like, make something like this anymore. You can't have a good middle-of-the-road game. And But I'm glad we have it, and we have something to look on following on for those who remember or even care about this stuff. And Sam and Max will live on for a little bit while longer. They had, there was like a comic book, uh, mini comic book series about them. Um, and then there was the TV cartoon TV show that they had uh, for a, uh, that I think lasted like a couple of seasons, if I recall. I remember watching it. It was basically as zany as the uh, game was for the most part. Oh yeah, George Lucas, yeah, who owned Lucas Arts. Um, and then later on, the duo would get another revival back in the 2000s. It was like, uh, let's see, 2009, I think it was, or something like that, uh, where they would get three complete extra adventures, which the, <laughs> no, really, <laughs> um, where they get more adventures uh, in their own by Telltale. And luckily, Steve Purcell worked on the right, yeah, it's over. It's over! Uh, and luckily, he was right for that, so luckily it kind of fit in the zaniness of the uh, Sam Max universe. We're leaving. <laughs> uh, they're like, you're, you're done now, bye. Okay, so we lied. <laughs> Not quite over yet. I don't, I don't think there's any more credits really after this, really. They've done everything they can. But anyway, I hope you, uh, I don't think there's much else I can do as well. So I hope you uh, enjoyed my play of Sam and Max Hit the Road. Um, hope they got you interested in this, these characters. Maybe one day I'll do uh, Sam and Max, the, 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 the Telltale series at some point. Um, there's three of them. They did remasters of them at one point, but I d probably won't do the remasters because they censored some of the jokes in those, and I'm not really a big fan of that. So I'll play. I'll try to find the original copies, or original versions of the game, which I think you can still get, and maybe play those instead. But either way, let's just keep popping on some, uh, some uh, you know, people on the screen there, and I hope you enjoyed. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>